Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have billionaire entrepreneur Mark Cuban giving us his take on the crypto market. Cuban observes many people in the crypto industry who put up money, subsidize it with rewards, and then buy those rewards back from their customers, all in the hopes of being able to create enough transactions to make a profit. He says the money market funds don't only happen to crypto. In 2008, they've been pegged to the dollar. Cuban notes that Bitcoin is the better store of value as it becomes difficult for people to leave their money in the bank. From a pricing perspective, Bitcoin will hold up significantly better than most people are expecting. Cuban says that in the crypto business, there needs to be a purpose in buying a token. He also believes that both Bitcoin and Ethereum will endure, unlike most others that will simply be wiped out. Let's check out this interview with Mark Cuban as he talks about the application of cryptocurrency in the market today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Everybody wants to know your opinion on this. Where do you stand on crypto today? Are you still bullish? Yeah, yeah. So any new technology, I don't care what it is, and I've been involved with a lot of new technologies, disruptive technologies. Um, I could take you back to the early days of streaming when we were the very first commercial streaming company. And right off the bat, it was hard to use. You know, if you think back to 1995 and you wanted to stream just audio, you had to have a subscription with an internet service provider. Then to make that work, you had to download a client which had a TCP IP client. Then you had to download a streaming audio client, you know, and you had to have a, the right kind of modem. There were all these pieces that had to fit together. It was complicated. And so the uptake was big for sports fans and, you know, big news junkies. And everybody else were like, Dude, you're an idiot. I'll just turn on my TV. You know, I'll just turn on the radio. What the hell do I have to go through all that hassle to, to just listen to um, a sporting event? And we reached that initial stage, and then all of a sudden it got a little bit boring, right? Because you had to wait for the, the new applications to come along. You know, we had to wait for live to come along. We had to wait for video to come along. We started, you know, streaming audio in 1995. When we did video, it was 1998. You know, and even then it was only postage stamp size. And it was only, you know, in 2012, let's say 2013, 14, 20, almost 20 years later where people looked at streaming like, okay, it's normal, right? You just click on Netflix and it just streams. Um, and you don't have to do anything else. Well, with crypto, it's very analogous to that. We're in the early hassle phases. Now, the very earliest of crypto, you know, however you want to decide the beginning with Bitcoin or whatever has been around 12 years. But in terms of applications with smart contracts, that's only 2017 for the most part. And so we're really only five years in. Cuban says the best part of Ethereum is that there are royalties. When an NFT is newly minted, a royalty percentage can be set. So when the NFT is resold, an additional percentage of profit is paid to the royalty owner. Cuban has learned from experience that marketing is extremely important in the crypto industry. People can create algorithms with any kind of output and call them stable, which people believe and is very misleading. Stablecoins should have a pick where it's auditable, definable, and trackable, which is not the case for all cryptocurrencies in the market now. So I'm still really bullish on crypto. We had some early wins, just like you know, streaming audio with sports and news. Um, now you know, with, with crypto, you have DeFi and you have you know, money transfer and some other applications but you haven't had any mainstream applications where your mom says, okay, we've got to get a wallet because I have to do A, B, or C, right? It's been DeFi, NFTs, and money transfer. And so it's kind of boring right now. We're waiting for that next round of applications, and there's a lot of people working on them. You know, NFTs for the, the resale um, of books. So we take NFTs past the collectible markets to the utility markets. NFTs for refi, which is for, um, Carbon, carbon offsets, buying and selling and, and trading carbon offsets, and even burning them so that they're not resold all the time, but they have a direct impact on, on, um, on the environment. And there'll be more and more and more of those applications that bring in, that are more mainstream. But they're not all the way here. They're not truly mainstream yet. And so we're going through that law. And you saw the same thing with the internet too, right? Until mobile phones came along, from 1995 to 2007 with the iPhone, meh. Right? I mean, you had Amazon, you had, you know, you could go shopping and you could stream, but it wasn't like it was just earth shattering. But once we got it on mobile, then we got the app store in what, 2009? 
And then even remember there, the first apps on the App Store were like, here, look, let me hold my phone like this. And it looks like <laughs> I'm drinking a beer. <laughs> right? Yeah, it looks like I'm drinking a beer. Just don't. There's no reason why crypto is going to be any different. But the good news is, you know, the investments I'm looking to make are geared towards applications that'll be mainstream and not about, okay, let's create an Instagram for crypto. Let's create a Twitter, not me too type applications. More like, okay, things that take advantage of smart contracts and distributed environments. I mean, you kind of touched on this, but what are some ideas and topics that make you excited? NFTs is books. I think particularly for textbooks. Now, whether or not we can get the, um, the college textbook publishers to go along is another issue, but you know the idea of kids buying books for classes today. My daughter just went to Vanderbilt, so the whole process of buying books. You know, first, do you want to buy new or used, right? Then you lug these books back, and then at the end of the semester, because they're only good for the time you are in the class, you make the decision. You know, yeah, I'm going to sell it. How do I sell it? Do I ship it off? Do I take it to the bookstore? It's just a pain in the ass, and in a digital world, it's ridiculous. And you know, with those as NFTs, well, the NFTs allow you to apply royalties that when that book is resold, the author and the publisher and whoever else is involved can get a set royalty fee. So that means that you know, the publishers and people who created the book can keep on getting paid, whereas when there's a physical book that gets sold and resold, they have to hope that book falls apart you know, and so that they can sell a new one. And so I think that's a great application as I talk about environmental impact with trading of carbon offsets. I think insurance, being able to very easily buy insurance. But I think the, in terms of the home run type applications um, and more complicated, longer to develop type things, you know, I think things like health insurance, right? The whole process of getting a claim pre-approved or approved after the fact is horrible. Nobody likes dealing with their insurance company, their health insurance company. First of all, for pre-approvals, you never know why you're going, whether or not you'll get pre-approved or not. And when you go, it's not like the UK where you just go to the NHS and you just hope they have it, not if you'll get approved. You know, here it's like, all right, I have this need, the doctor's prescribing it for me, but I can't afford to pay it out of pocket. And so what am I going to do if my insurance company doesn't approve it? Well, with crypto, um, you could reinvent how insurance claims are pre-approved or approved by creating um, an environment where you have a thousand validators. There's um, different types of roll-ups, you know, optimistic roll-up where you have validators and challengers, right? So you could train people to be a validator and pay them every time they validate, um, approve or don't approve a um, claim. The optimistic roll-up side of it, the challengers will say, okay, I, you know, you didn't prove this, but not for the right reason. Your training says you should have approved it. I'm challenging it. So anything that you're staking that you put up to get paid for that, I get, and that, that keeps it honest. That's just a crypto way of keeping things honest. And so that type of application has scale, it has impact, and it's better in a decentralized, you know, wide and flat organization than vertically integrated company like our traditional companies. And I know that's deep in the weeds, you know, but that's the reality, right? You've got, you know, any tech advancement, you've got to start, you know, Steve Jobs had this great saying, he said, everything's a remix. And you have to look at new technologies and look at things the way they're being done and say, okay, how can I remix these together? You know, how can I do a mashup in music terms, right? And um, if you can mash this stuff up, and, and have it make sense and make it easier for and better for people to use, that's a big win. Cuban says that the future of Bitcoin and Ethereum will surpass all others. He says the weak and baseless crypto tokens that exist today will eventually phase themselves out. Mark was early in many of his business ventures in the 90s and has adapted to current technologies, which has paid dividends to the billionaire entrepreneur. Even though Cuban says that the crypto market is somewhat boring when it comes to innovation and waiting on the next phase of the market to transform, he's still bullish on crypto. What do you guys think about Cuban's take on the crypto sphere, and where do you think 2022 will lead in market opportunity? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.